Hey everybody, I'm Trisha Shortino, the CEO of Belay. And I'm Lisa Zeval, the COO of Belay. So we are spending a little bit of time today talking through remote working. At Belay, we've been a remote workforce organization for nine years since inception, and we have kind of figured out over the last nine years how to work successfully remote. And as some of you may be considering what that means for you and you or your organization, we wanted to put some tips and tricks together and some steps to walk through to guide you through the process of moving your team from on-site to a remote team. So as you get started going through that process, the first thing you kind of really want to consider is what are the positions and hurdles that your organization will work through as you consider going remote? First and foremost, do you have the right equipment? Do you have desktops? Do you have laptops? Do you have the phones and cell phones or a voice over IP system you may need to function remotely? Also thinking through what jobs and functions of certain jobs can be remote functions and which, which ones may actually require somebody being on site. And then once you've made those decisions as to who actually can work remote and how you can have those people work from home, then there are some great tips and guidelines we're going to walk through with you today on how to actually make that happen successfully. So the first one we're going to talk about is setting expectations and guidelines for your team. And I'm going to ask my, my friend and partner, Lisa, to start us off and <coughs> talking a little bit about, Lisa, what are the, some of the things that we've done or you do to set expectations and guidelines for your remote team? Yeah, I think expectations are super important. I think that a lot of, um, this is not gonna come as a surprise, even if you have a brick and mortar and you have on-site team members, right? So you perhaps have your KPIs, you've got metrics, you've got goals for your team members. It's very, very similar, even when you're off-site and you have remote workers. The difference is no longer is it just about that job function. Are they doing that task right? But what are you actually expecting of them when they show up, right? When they show up every single day. So I made a few items here. I made a list of a few items. Um, and one of those really starts with availability. Um, and that's going to depend on whether somebody is hourly, if their salary, and what their job function is. Um, for example, if you're in a call center, you might have specific shifts. And so there might not be quite as much flexibility there. Um, if somebody is hourly, you're gonna wanna make sure that they have eight hours full of work versus somebody who's salary and they've been used to being able to flex their time a little bit. So I think the first one is availability, set working hours. Do you want everyone to be at their desk by 8 a.m. and they cannot clock out until five? Um, even what does that system look like? Are you prepared? Do you have technology that allows somebody to um to clock in and clock out what does it mean if they want to take a longer lunch is that okay um do, are you expecting them to eat at at their workspace so really sit down and talk about availability um, i know that we have found in our own teams trisha that was one of the first things right when people start working for belay they get a little bit confused or like okay do i have to be sitting down especially the first day right how many mm -hmm. new new team members do we have in their first day they sit down at their laptop and they're like okay, it's eight o'clock and I'm here and what should I do? <laughs> um, right, right, right. And some, and some of us might decide um, you can start at eight or you can start at nine and that's up to the role or the job or the manager, really. Right, right. So I think just clearly first and foremost, if you decide someone can work remote is setting that availability. So there's just no questions asked and somebody doesn't, um, isn't meeting, like if they don't feel like they're meeting the expectation, they really, really understand why. So that's the first one. Second is productivity. Um, and it goes back to those KPIs and those metrics that I shared in the beginning, um, letting them know, again, kind of going back to that call center, if you're in a call center or customer service role, um, are they still going to be responsible for making the same amount of phone calls? Um, are there, um, you know, a certain amount of upsells that they need to work on? If it's a virtual assistant, um, is there a response time? You know, around here we call it a virtual nod. Is there a certain response time? So just, again, you might have to adjust what those metrics look like, especially if there are certain tasks that are no longer translate into remote work, but making sure those are really clear. And then meetings. Oh, we get this question all the time, don't we, Trisha? I know you do a ton of webinars. Yes. 
And they're always saying, what are you important. Doing? Yes, <laughs> yes. You probably meet more virtually than you did when you were in an office because you don't have the option to just pop into somebody's office at leisure or you're walking down the hall and say, oh, let me see what Bob's up to and let me ask him about what happened with X, Y, and Z. You actually, those times then become meetings on a platform like this. Totally, yes. And the type of meeting. So we here at Belay, we believe, again, being remote, you're always looking to make that connection with somebody. Um, it would be much different if you guys couldn't see my facial reactions right now. Um, and so you want to make that connection. We're going to talk about that a little later. I don't want to give away any spoilers. Um, but decide if you're going to have, you know, mandatory meetings. And if you're going to make them mandatory, you have to verbalize that. And also the medium in which you're going to do it. We got great tools um, that you know we're going to share with you, but is it going to be web conference? Do you require that they keep their web camera on? Mm -hmm. um, and, and that may be something that you would need to work with. And then with that also comes distractions and meetings. Um, I know that there's a couple of funny YouTube videos out there. Um, or some favorite comedians of mine, I won't drop names, that talk about what it's like to be on a conference call, right? Like you can't tell where somebody's at and if they're out mowing their lawn at the same time they're talking to you. So I think just having really strict guidelines with your meetings is super helpful, but you're definitely going to have to meet more often than you would in an office um, to continue to have that productivity. So those are the top three things I would say first off about setting those expectations. Excellent. Great, great, great tips. Love it. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So how about tools? Okay, let's pop into tools. So um, like Lisa mentioned, she talked about some of the fabulous tools we use. Um, first and foremost, equipment. So let's talk a little bit, literally the hardware to do the job. Um, laptops, uh, we provide laptops for all of our Belay employees. Um, some of your team members might have a desktop if you're in office. And so you really have to consider, are they poised to work from home? Do they have the laptop ability to transition their work to home? With laptop, First, which maybe most of them have at this point, but web cameras. You never know. <laughs> so web cameras are big, right? Um, for yeah. us anyway, we require a webcam. Um, even with some of our um, non-team members and some of our contractors, webcam is important because we are a big proponent of video um, mm -hmm. as a tool that we leverage because like Lisa mentioned, being able to see each other really does add an extra element of connection um, body language, so we find it important. So do they have a laptop? Do they have a webcam? Um, do they have access to phone or phone system? Do you have voice over IP? Are you gonna let them use their cell phone? Um, do they need a company phone? Um, also, some roles may require specific supplies, um, printers at home, papers, um, shipping supplies, depending on the role. And we highly re recommend ear, ear, ear pods. For, yes, <laughs> headphones, AirPods, whatever yes. that may be, noise canceling. So actually, if there's something going on in the home that's not in this room, it actually really helps mute what's not happening right here and allows you to have a little more privacy and a better audio experience. So we recommend a headphone for anybody who's working from home, especially if you're going to be in a meeting setting like this. Mm -hmm. And of course, I think it goes without saying, you've got to have a great internet connection. This is hard to do if you're buffering or if you don't have a great internet connection. So those are some of the things that we view from an equipment perspective to really get started. Second, really having a dedicated office space. Now you might not have a room in your office that room in your home that can be an office, but maybe it's a spare bedroom or, or a, a part of your dining room that's off to the side of the house that you can dedicate to be a quiet space for you to work. So we say we recommend a quiet office space, even if it's not its very own room. And then being mindful of what's actually behind you. Do you are you are you causing distraction because your family's walking behind you? Is your cat and your dog um, <laughs> doing laps around you? So um, depending on how your home, we've is got some up, funny stories about. We that. do. We have some <laughs> stories about what goes on back there. So you might want a wall behind you versus the desk being up against the wall. Um, then also file management, digital file management, especially if you're remote. So for us, we use tools like Dropbox and Google Drive, but where are you keeping your documents that everybody can have access? You're not going to have a central file cabinet in an office equipment room that people can go get files. So digital file management is a big one. 
scanning and housing documents in a digital place where people can access and not physically have to be together is important. Um, and we're a big promote, proponent and fan of um, Dropbox. Um, and then a web, a web conferencing tool like this. Um, we use Zoom, we highly recommend Zoom. Actually, Zoom right now is running a great promotion um, and offers some free services, so I would check them out if you're in need of a web conferencing system. Um, they're fabulous. There's also Google Hangouts if you're a Gmail user, and tools like GoToMeeting and WebEx. Um, we've used them all. We love them all. Again, we are a big believer in video um, as a means to maintaining great culture and organization for our team. Then you have to look at things like communication tools. So how are we going to connect um, on the quick and dirty, right? Sometimes if you just have a real quick question and you don't want to flood somebody's inbox, what are the expectations you're setting for your team? Are you good with texting? Is texting a good option? Or do you not want texting? Do you want to use an instant messenger? So we're on um, Gmail suite, we're on the G suite. So we use the instant messenger in, in Google for our organization, but there are plenty of organizations who use tools like Slack to communicate, or maybe email is the one for you, or maybe a text or a text group works for you. But even just defining where will your team communicate outside of email if there's a quick communication that you don't want in your email. Mm -hmm. Then there's also project management tools. Um, how do you get the big projects lifted and done and task management for a group of individuals or a team? Um, we recommend tools like Asana, Basecamp, Trello, there's so many out there. I think it depends on your individual organization, what your team's trying to accomplish, but having some kind of project management software where people can collaborate, it's in the cloud, um, it doesn't require people be in person is a, is a effective way to manage tasks and projects for an organization remotely. And then last but not least, and we'll talk a little bit more about this later, um, cybersecurity. Do you have a VPN that your staff needs to log into? Do they have easy access to do that remotely? Um, and then are there other tools you want to use to help with security, password protection like LastPass, um, and things like that that you want to look into to make sure that people have access securely into all of the tools that you're using. So from a tool perspective, that was a lot of tools. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of tools. Um, there's a lot out there. There's so many, so many great tools that really support working remote. Um, there is no shortage of opportunity to work remotely due to all of the tools that are everything in the cloud everybody can access from home. So really, if you're struggling with how to do it, there, there's so much opportunity to find the right things that work for you and your team to be able to work from home. Yeah. So um, and I think that's digital also transform. Cool. I mean, if you think about digital transformation, right, there's so many companies right now in the IT space or that their IT managers and IT departments are working through digital transformation. And so hopefully none of this is completely new to them. Um, another one that we didn't have on our list, I think a lot of brick and mortar offices use is Microsoft Teams too. Yes. Um, and, and that's a great, a great tool to use to work remotely. So hopefully this is not a surprise, but yeah, mm -hmm. we use a lot of tools around here at Belay. Um, and it's trial and error. You know, yes. we've used some tools that we thought were awesome. And then as our team grew or our needs changed, we change. And so I think that's important to note too, that not to be married to one tool. Like if it doesn't work for you, scrap it, go to something different. Yes. And sometimes you outgrow a tool. So you might start at one yeah. tool because they have what you need at the time. And if your organization is growing or thriving and your team is growing and it just doesn't make mm -hmm. sense for you anymore, you might make a switch. Um, even similar for a CRM application, right. um, which we use. I mean, we, we, we made a switch as an organization in this last year because the tool we were using no longer had the capabilities we wanted. So we migrated to a new mm -hmm. tool that has, is more robust because that's where we are as an organization. So being flexible to make a change totally. is going to be important. Yeah, you got you to gotta use what works for you. Yeah, absolutely. Great, so let's kick it over. Next thing we're gonna talk a little bit about is communication. Um, so Lisa, I'd love to hear from you a little bit about um, some of the recommendations and things for remote work communication. Yeah, so hopefully you guys out there are starting to see that we're building upon this, right? So 
once you determine that you have team members that can work remote, then you set the expectations. They've got to have the right tools. And we've kind of teased you a little bit about what communication looks like. Um, but really, it's over communication. Um, after almost 10 years in business, we think we over communicate. And we were just together as a, as a leadership team. And we learned that we need to communicate even more which is hard to believe, right? Like, Crazy. I was like, no, well, just when no you way. think you've said it enough, <laughs> say it again. You can say never, it again. Just say keep again. repeating yourself. <laughs> that's right. That's right. There's this whole thing about communication and how, you know, what I say is how you interpret it as something different, right? We, we learn this whole chart about each point along the way, something gets lost in that. And so you really have to be very conscious about how you're communicating, what you're communicating and the channels on what you're doing that. And so I, excuse me, I think as an organization, you have to have all the right tools, but you have to set some expectations that go around that too. Um, first and foremost, email. Um, I think every organization out there has email. It's such a wonderful tool. Everybody has it on their phone, has it on their computer. It's really, really super easy. Um, the problem with email is that sometimes you don't get the response you need. Um, we here have what's called the virtual knot. I teed that up a little bit earlier. And what that means is we've set an expectation on um, how soon we expect somebody to read that email. And it has varied over the years, depending upon which season we're in, whether that's I will respond, even if a virtual knot is, even if you don't have the answer, just saying, hey, Trisha, I have this, I'll get back to you. And setting the expectation when you will get back to somebody um, regarding that. And whether it's an hour or two hours or even 24 hours, it's super important to set when you are going to do a virtual nod. Um, the worst is when you send an email, everybody out there has done that. And you're looking at your watch, it's been three days and you've heard nothing, right? Mm -hmm. We work with vendors. I won't That's name names. That's the worst. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, you know, who you send an email, you don't hear anything back. So virtual nod is really, really important with email. Um, I, I can't stress that enough. So that's the first. And then I don't have this on my little notes. I'm going to go rogue here for a second. Um, how the the tone in your email i th i think this is this is on site or remote mm -hmm. it's even more so when you're remote because you never do get that in person right or very rarely um watch the tone in the email um you know make sure that you're speaking appropriately watch the amount of emojis that are in there um you know be direct communication a lot again gets lost in email but um Typos, but work with professionalism yes, reread yes. yourself and then some things, honestly, let's be honest, some things shouldn't be an email. No, 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 no. Like, yeah, you should have picked up the phone and called on that one or yes. um, even being mindful what should be in an email and what maybe has some sensitivity to it. Right. That should be a phone call or a Zoom. Yeah, yeah. And, and working with, you know, your HR department, your legal compliance department. Um, I mean, like you said, some things just should not be ever put in, in print. Um, not that I, you know, think anything nefarious is happening, but I'm just saying, just, you know, the tone should not be communicated. So email for us, I know, is the number one thing that we use. Outside of that, you mentioned instant messaging, a lot of tools that you can use that. You also mentioned our CRM. Uh, we recently made the switch to Salesforce. This is not a plug for them, although we do love them. Um, but there's a great chatter feature in Salesforce. Um, lots of instant messaging that happens within the G Suite. Um, so those are really, really good. And, and what we find is that an email is for things that you can wait for that virtual nod. An instant message is almost something where you would have gotten up from your desk and walked to someone's office, right? Like, I need an answer pretty quickly. I'm gonna, just going to walk around the corner. That's what really an instant message is. Um, next, video conferencing. We talked about Zoom, how awesome Zoom is for us. Um, you know, WebEx um, is another great tool just to see the person's reaction, set those meetings, set the expectation, just like you would within a conference room. Um, so definitely communicating there. And then text and phone. Um, you know, for our leadership team, we have a group text. I know some of our partners use the same thing. Um, it's easy to get out quick communication. Again, everybody has their phone. Now, if you are in an office and you've been using a phone system, like Trisha said before, looking at your tools and trying to figure out um, if you need to perhaps do some sort of cell phone allowance, um, what are what are the policies around somebody using their cell phone for sensitive information? Um, again, kind of that cybersecurity thing can also work with your cell phone. So you need to might need to visit how you want your team members to use their phone. But it's a great, great, great tool. As you can imagine, we're emailing, we're instant messaging, 
we're on web conference and we're texting, oh, and calling each other too. Um, five different ways that we communicate and we're doing it all the time, nonstop. And a lot of times, right, Tricia, we will say the same thing on all five channels just to make sure that it, nothing is lost in translation. Yes, yes. And, and going back to your point where you talked about um, if you're asking your team to use their personal cell phones for business, making sure that mm -hmm. the security set the way you want to, but considering an allowance in case they need to increase right. their plan, maybe they're not on an unlimited plan and you're asking them to use their personal device for you. We also right. offer something similar for internet. So maybe your employees only have the base package at home for internet speed or bandwidth, but you actually need them to have the right amount of gigs and power to work from home. So we also provide our team members with a internet allowance so that they can upgrade their home internet so that they have the best available speed mm -hmm. and resources to them so that they can work really effectively on both their phones and the internet. Yeah, because that's the other downside. I mean, I know, um, I believe it is, there's another web conferencing tool, shoot. We used to use it all the time. I, I lost my trainer. Remember, um, in the very beginning, we used it. Oh, Skype. I don't, oh my gosh. Skype. Skype, Skype, Skype. Skype. Actually, when you log into Skype, it will actually say it needs a certain amount of, of bandwidth. Um, yeah. So I think, too, when you're um, mm -hmm. perhaps evaluating on that tools list, evaluating the tools you want to use, um, realizing that some of your team members who aren't used to working remote might not be able to right. use a tool like that because it requires so much bandwidth. Yeah, especially the video capabilities because the streaming of the video and recording yeah. things like this takes a good amount of bandwidth. So you just want to make sure that they, right. they have the, op the options and the things they need at home to be successful using the tools you're going to mandate that they use. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So speaking of success, I know here at Belay, we measure success by metrics. Um, we're big, big, big on dashboards and metrics and all those things, but we also measure success within our culture. So I'd love for you to touch as our CEO, I'd love for you to touch a little bit about culture because I know that's really important for teams that aren't used to working remote, how to maintain great culture. Yeah, so working remote um, really does emphasize, if you will, um, how unique it is to create an environment where people enjoy who they work with, enjoy coming to work and love their jobs, when really all they're doing is walking into their home office. So there's a lot of intentionality that goes into how do you create an environment and an, and an organization that feels cohesive, connected, and engaged when you're actually not all in the same building together. And right. we've worked really hard over the last nine years to make sure that that actually is a thing. You can have a living, breathing culture and a healthy organization where people like to show up to work and literally we're not in the same room together. The, the opportunity we have to be yeah. together in person is few and far between and it, and it takes a ton of intentionality. But to not sound like mm -hmm. a broken record, it's a lot of over communicating and using multiple channels to communicate. You're we'll over communicating, on, over communicating. Over I love it. <laughs> and just when we thought we, we communicated too much, like I said, you say it again. Um, inside the communication, we also allow room for there to be the more personal communication. So not every not 100% of your communication is going to be about the work, the job, the metric, right? Find the moments that make sense for you where you're communicating about celebrations, wins, stories, telling stories to your team, even if it's on a video message, on a chatter, in an email, or on a Zoom like this, will be important to connect people back to your mission, your vision, your values. Why are we here? I'm reminding people, this is why we do what we do and finding every opportunity to communicate the wins and celebrate the wins. Whether it is a, a big project completion, finding the time to celebrate that. It might be a metric that a team achieved, celebrating those things globally with everybody. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we do, we have weekly staff meetings, is at the end of those staff meetings, we do what we call snaps. So at the end of every meeting, we take five minutes and we allow the entire organization to chime in and give a snap or kudos or props mm -hmm. to somebody on the team for something that they recognize them doing. Like, Snaps to Susie because I noticed that she went above and beyond on this client and here's what she did. Snaps to another team member because they helped on a project and went above and beyond what they were supposed to. So we allow the team to share and honor each other in celebration. And um, 
it has been very successful and we all love it. And um, since we don't get to see each other every day, it's great to see where people are winning and celebrate those mm -hmm. wins with them. In addition to that, we also are mindful about having being social virtually. So from time to time, we'll have a virtual coffee chat where there's no topic. We're not nece necessarily talking about work. Maybe we're celebrating something. Um, or we'll all get on a Zoom and bring a cup of coffee and have some coffee chat. Sometimes we will do a virtual happy hour. End of day, maybe there's some fun announcement we want to make and we ask everybody to come at the end of the day and have a virtual happy hour. Um, so that's a big proponent. And then on Fridays, we ask all of our team uh, to engage and post what are their weekly highs and lows. And we do this in our, in our chatter feed, which is a, our feed inside Salesforce, where all of the company can engage with each other. What are your highs and lows for the week? And some of those may be personal, some of those may be work-related, but really people are engaging with each other in all of these things that are outside their roles and their duties and the conversations they may have with their leader about their job specifically. Mm -hmm. So that has helped us foster great connection and culture. And then lastly, I would say, as a leadership team and as a management team, what are you doing to foster great culture? So are you extending trust? Are you a micromanager? Are you treating adults as adults? Um, we say a lot, we use the quote, you know, are you filling the gap with trust? So if something has been missed, are you leading in a way where you are asking about something and filling the gap with trust instead of being accusatory? When you make the switch from going from in office to remote, one of the things that you find as a leader is because you can't see people, you have to figure out how to how information is going to pass between you and your team. And in the process, while you're learning how that information is going to get to and from, filling the gap with trust and, and believing good intent in all people will get you very far as a leader, right? So it's, yeah. it's easy to um, wonder when you didn't get an email response for three days, or right. if you think something was due today and you didn't get it yet, to, to fill the gap with doubt instead of with trust. So we lead with fill the gap, fill the gap with trust, lead with good intention, Let's be honest, people don't show up to work to generally fail. People don't no. want to let you down. They don't want to, they didn't come up, come into work today and say, you know what? I think I'm not going to miss, I'm not going <laughs> to achieve my goals today. And I'm just going to mess everything up. You know, that is nobody's yeah. intention is to yeah. not do a good job. So missed right. expectations are sometimes misinformation. So um, I think if you use those things, if you fill the gap with trust, you lead in that direction. You create moments where people can share um, and celebrate each other and over communicate and honor everybody in the process. You'll find out that you've, you've created something that has great culture. So that's yeah. what we've done here at Belay so far. And, and one thing I wanted to add as you were going through that is, is there's some assessments too that we at Belay have used to help understand the different communication styles and personality and even how someone wants to be recognized, yeah. you know, really diving into that. And so I think there's some great tools that, that teams can use. Um, MBA languages of appreciation comes to mind for me. Um, the Enneagram is super hot right now, but you always have the strength finders, mm -hmm. Myers-Briggs, and that has really helped us bring some cohesion in that team and also help that trust level because you understand how somebody is working internally, like what their mind thinks. Um, to help also fill those gaps. Absolutely. Perfect. Yes. What an example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, next, let's talk about the fun stuff. So you moved your whole team home, you're set up, you're communicated, you have your tools, you know what your communication expectations are, you're creating great culture. So, and then we got to talk about what is the risk management? What is the business <laughs> continuity? All the legalities and fun stuff. So we give that to our chief operating <laughs> officer, Lisa, to talk a little bit about right now. Yes, yes, yes. So your insurance agent says, that sounds awesome. But you just make them really nervous when you just sent everybody home. So um, your insurance agent can thank me later. Uh, we'll give you my address so you can send out gifts. No, no, just easy. Um, but yes, 
you do have to think about that risk management. Um, and that is something that, you know, again, we've got great insurance risk managers that help us here was to think through um, and develop what we call a business continuity plan. Um, and that goes through, you know, things like what happens if there is a natural disaster, natural, you know, um, national um, emergency that happens, um, you know, and, and things that are seriously out of your control. Perhaps your brick and mortar that you've been so used to using um, has a fire, you know, God forbid it has a fire and you can't get to work. Um, what happens, again, going back to natural disasters, there's a hurricane, there's a tornado. How do you keep your business running? You have clients that depend on you, you have partners that depend on you, your employees depend on you. And so they wanna know that you're keeping this business up and running. And so a business continuity plan, I can't stress it enough, is an, an awesome tool to do that. Um, you know, it's some, it's some difficult conversations. It's kind of like making out a will for your business. Um, you know, who, what is the chain of command when something bad happens? You need to make sure that you have all your team members' uh, information. It's great to have it in the cloud. We're a remote team. We love everything in the cloud, but sometimes you need that hard piece of paper mm -hmm. somewhere. And so with that business continuity plan, after you develop it, it's then printing it out. You're going to identify your risk. Um, you know, you want to also minimize or eliminate risk. Um, and so there's a lot of backup that goes into things as well. And we talked about having things in the cloud, but what do you have to have a physical copy of? I know for us, we've got some very important corporate documents. They're in the cloud, um, but we also have to make sure that we have physical copies of them too. Maybe there's a redundancy system. Maybe you have things in the cloud, but you also have, um, you know, maybe little pin drives where you've also got some information and that's in a safety deposit box or it's at an officer's house or a board member's house. So just making sure when you come home and work remotely um, that you're not just having that, um, you know, that, that plan on what happens if there's a fire in the building and how to get everybody out, but how to keep the business rolling is really what this is all about. So um, determine the plan about recovery, recovery contingencies. That's super important. Um, create a crisis communication plan. You were really awesome about mentioning that all those tools, Trisha. So then this is a great time to use those tools. Um, everybody's cell phone number so you can text them. Um, perhaps it's a group texting system that you use, so it's already in there. Um, but having everything written down is going to be super important. And then just prepare for it. Talk about it with your team. Say, hey, if something like this happens, this is how we're going to make sure that everybody continues to provide the awesome service that we have, that everybody continues to get paid, that we continue to be the top in our market and in our space. Um, and so it's just really being prepared um, and thinking through, um, again, risk management, thinking through, thinking about what can go wrong and being prepared for it and then just hoping it doesn't, right? Um, but yes. it's always hoping it doesn't. Um, the, the finance side of me also says, again, your insurance agent's gonna be happy because your, your, um, your insurance provider is gonna wanna know that. And then there's also some savings, little tip there, mm -hmm. also some savings that happens when they know that you've thought through this because a lot of businesses haven't thought mm -hmm. through it. So um, don't forget, this is a very important part when you're, when you're moving to a remote team. Awesome. Okay, guys. Yeah. So we have talked about if you're going remote, who's going remote and can they go remote? We've talked about setting some great expectations and guidelines, availability for employee hours and all those things. We've talked about tools that you could leverage to go remote. We've talked about communication tips and strategies and the tools to even use for communication. We've talked about some ideas you can put into place if you wanna make sure you maintain great culture when you're remote. And then we've talked a lot about risk management. So um, with that, we're gonna to end today's session on that note. We know there is so much more that we could talk about when it comes to remote workforce. This is just scratching the surface. This is a great get started um, plan for you all. Um, we would love to hear from you if there are any specific things you would love a deep dive into. Lisa and I plan to, to continue to share resources, information, uh, resources and information to you regarding remote working. So we'd love to hear from you on how and what else we could serve you with, what other content would be super valuable. 
And hear me say in final note that you really can do this successfully. Um, there are very few um, organizations where, where working remote would, would cause hardship. Like we have worked with so many different industry professionals who've been able to do this and do it successfully. Um, and we've lived it out and feel like it's a great option um, for your organization. And honestly, the employees love it. It, it, yeah. it gives great flexibility in their work-life balance, self-care, um, and love for the job when there can be so much flexibility. I mean, who wants to do the rush hour commute if they don't have to? No, no, no. And yeah, like you said, I mean, just the productivity goes through the roof. Um, I know our team is so grateful for the opportunity to be treated like an adult, to be extended trust um, and to really work with autonomy. Um, I mean, hands down, it's the best thing we could have ever done. And I know that we've heard that from some of our partners, um, you know, who've walked away from a brick and mortar. Um, it's a great cost savings, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yes. You don't have that, that overhead of, of that yeah. building, right? Um, and yeah. they've come, you know, brought their team to work remotely. And it's not just about working from home, right? And that's part of the setting the expectations. But, you mm -hmm. know, some teams are allowed to work from a co-working space mm -hmm. um, or, you know, work while traveling. Um, mm -hmm. And that really does it, talk about build, a culture builder. Ooh. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So if you want more resources in the meantime, um, hit up our website. We have a ton of resources on our website, uh, www.laysolutions.com. We're also on Facebook and Instagram. We will keep you in the know. Um, we have a blog you can subscribe to as well on our website. And we look forward to seeing you other, on the other side. Good luck in your remote, remote yes. journey. We are here if you need the help. Yes. Bye. Thank you. Bye.